Orala Fori, the founder of the African Dream and Information and Communication Research Consultancy, joined Mohamed Idris, Sudan's ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Gordon Boy Malik, Deputy Chief of Mission to South Sudan, Washington, D.C., Dr. Bikram K. Paul, renowned sergeant and peace advocate Regan Durkin of HWPL, and others to speak at a high level event hosted by HWPL, an international peacemaking NGO at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., on May 31, 2023. Mr. Ofori's speech sought to promote peace among young Africans and shed light on the role of African media in institutionalizing peace. He stressed acknowledging the challenges of the past in Africa and the role of the media in disseminating certain types of information. The speech also dwelt on utilizing media as a powerful tool in promoting institutional peace by fostering critical thinking, empathy, conflict resolution skills among the younger generation and encouraging collaboration and partnership between embassies and their diaspora to garner support and promote peace. He also touched on working together with the civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations like HWP or to lay a strong foundation for peace. It was a great opportunity for the African Dream Consultancy to highlight the positive impact of peaceful media, especially among younger Africans, even though Sudan's ambassador confirmed at the event that day the suspension of the ceasefire in his country as he called on the Biden administration to do more to end the war in his country. Thank you very much for that um, introduction. I don't know if I qualify to meet all the cool things that she said about me. <laughs> but um, I have I had the blessing and opportunity to meet and work with amazing individuals. And um, if I stand here, it is on their shoulders that I stand. Um, thanks for putting this HWPL thing together. I think it's, uh, it's a really, um, cool opportunity for us as humans to find ways to build and foster peace and to create an avenue for young people um, like all of you and uh, myself to, you know, play a role in making sure that peace becomes something as vital as the air we breathe. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, distinguished guests, uh, the Sudan ambassador, South Sudan ambassador, and the Mad Madagascar ambassador. Um, I'd like to acknowledge each and every one of us here um, for taking time out of your precious schedule to be here with us as we share and discover ways in which to promote and build the peace that we all seek. Uh, my mother, God rest her soul, would say the most important thing besides the air and food that we eat is peace. We can't eat peace, but we can work towards making it lasting. It is a great honor to be invited here as a speaker for HWPL's 10th anniversary under the theme, New Decade, Making Institutional Peace Take Root. I commend the organization's um, incessant effort over the last uh, decade towards global peace, especially with Africa as a major part of this August effort. As an African, my continent is rich with tapestry uh, of cultures, um, traditions, and diversity, but not devoid of challenges. Oh, and I'm also African-American, so I'm part American too. Um, <laughs> thanks for accepting me on that level. Ambassador Idris said something that stuck with me, which is the fact that um, the young people and the old people share the present, but the future belongs to the young people. And I very much agree with that, Ambassador. I, I think it's a very profound thing to say um, when we consider the fact that the future belongs to the youth. We're just here on borrowed time trying to point and direct them to the things that they need to do to build a better tomorrow. And I feel like with everyone here in this room, the future is in good hands. Um, and I can't wait to see what it provides to us. At the moment, Sudan is a conspicuous example of the efforts that we see in Africa to grow and establish peace despite the conflict and the uh, misunderstanding. I believe for uh, a diamond to shine, it must go through, you know, 
the refining process for gold to come out of the earth to shine it must go through the fire people must go you know underground to dig it up and seek it for every good thing that happens to and for us even to be able to eat you need utensils to cook you need fire to cut up stuff and you must put in that effort and i believe sudan and south sudan are a reminder to africa that for us to stand and be the unified continent that people like kwame nkrumah julius nerere nelson mandela you name them have preached about over and over we need to go through the fire I believe we'll get to that point in time where we will come out of the fire. We'll look behind us and we'll be like, we needed to do this. This is not happening randomly or without a reason. Those going through the difficulty, those going through the war, those experiencing the strife, it's not happening to them randomly. There's a reason. We might not know and understand the reason now, but we're working towards that place of understanding. And when we arrive there, we will all be able to pat ourselves on the backs and say, we did our best. That's all that we need to do, every one of us here, our best. And I thank Ambassador Idris and Ambassador Malek for putting in the effort and doing their best. I thank everyone here and those watching online just for doing your best taking time off your busy schedules to make this work. I believe it is crucial that we confront these challenges head on and find lasting solutions to the pain and suffering that has been endured by many people. The world needs to hear and it needs to act. The media needs to make the world hear these stories, especially from a perspective that does not further amplify the vision, but instead pushes for progress, dialogue, and coming together to work. We need media platforms that go beyond the surface level narratives, but instead provide deep analysis and promote dialogue on complex issues that affect our societies. I might sound a little critical of the media. I'm a member of the press myself. I'm a member of this press club. but. When truth needs to be told, it needs to be told. And so please watch out for me. I don't want to, <laughs> I want to walk out in peace to my family. But yeah, um, we must encourage media organizations to invest in investigative journalism, fact checking and critical reporting to ensure accuracy and accountability. I am not saying let's not report the negatives. But while doing that, we should suggest positive ways of coming out of them too, for the sake of our future. As a media personality myself with over 15 years in the sector, I understand that the media is important to society's development. It has a profound influence on our lives. The media has the potential to be a powerful force for promoting institutional peace or flaming the fires of discord. By fostering critical thinking, compassion, and peaceful coexistence, we can be able to develop a vibrant and positive media. And let us not forget that the work and the world of entertainment also forms an equally powerful part of the media. This is where music, filmmaking, visual art, or even comedy forms an equally powerful part of the media. We tend to forget or overlook these uh, aspects, but they are media, if um, you consider that. This is where music, um, for instance, like Afrobeat, has all of a sudden become such a powerful force on Earth. <laughs> like, wherever you go, if you don't hear an Afrobeat music, after staying there for one hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's just to put that out there. Um, Afrobeats, like I said, has become a dominant force 
of music that is shaping lives. Imagine if Afrobeat artists were peace ambassadors for and from their respective countries. Look at the amount of numbers they command. Look at the amount of following and influence they command. Fela is a great example. He used his music, his work through music and Afrobeat to preach peace. And I believe we still have artists with that power and that level of influence who can do that. We just need a kind of media that would veer them towards that direction. Information from a World Press Freedom Day event recently organized by HWPL on May 3rd in collaboration with UNESCO revealed that the media world is facing several challenges including media freedom, the safety of journalists, polarization of political and societal discords, erosion of trust, imposition of a state of emergency and the internet closure. Repression of critical voices and independent media due to the collapse of traditional media business models. Fight against hate speech and online harm that does not respect international standards. Armed with the knowledge of these thoughts that stifle the free and genuine flow of information in a vibrant media, permit me to call on all of us to let us harness the power of the media to break down barriers and bridges that divide us and build a world where conflicts are resolved through dialogue and differences are celebrated. Together, as we plan towards lasting solutions, we can also empower the younger generation to be agents of change and ambassadors of peace where we have failed. Another vital point is the embassies. Embassies hold a vital role in representing their countries abroad and influence extends far beyond diplomatic relations. They are hubs of culture, trade, and cooperation serving as bridges between nations and their diaspora communities. Harnessing the power of collaboration between embassies and their diaspora can be a catalyst for positive change, creating a strong foundation for peace and understanding. To achieve this, it is essential to recognize the invaluable contributions of civil society organizations, that CSOs, and non-governmental organizations, that's NGOs, like HWPL. CSOs and NGOs, as well as organizations of their likes, have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of peace and have shown exemplary commitment to building bridges across divides. The Declaration of Peace and Cessation of War, for example, is a peace initiative proposed by the HWPL in 2016 to the United Nations, which aims to establish principles and norms to prevent and resolve conflicts, promote peace, and build a global culture of peace. Through joint efforts, embassies and CSOs or NGOs can organize forums like this one, conferences, and cultural exchanges that bring together diverse stakeholders. These platforms serve as catalysts for dialogue, facilitating and exchanging ideas, perspectives, and experiences. By fostering an environment of collaboration and mutual respect, we can lay the groundwork for lasting peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the path to peace requires unity collaboration, and collective action. By encouraging collaboration and partnership between embassies and their respective diaspora, 
we can harness the power of global citizenship to build bridges, promote understanding, and foster a culture of peace. CSOs and NGOs like HWPL and others that you might already know of play a cultural and a crucial role in this endeavor, serving as catalyst for positive change. Let us embrace this opportunity for collaboration, recognizing the strength in our diversity and the power of partnerships. Together, we can transcend boundaries, overcome challenges, and create a world where peace is not just a distant thing that we dream about, but a tangible reality for all, and that hopefully all can achieve. It's a common thing that the people or those that the world expects the least from are the ones that end up doing the things that the world least expected. Today in this room, I'm honored to be surrounded by a lot of those people. And I know together we're all going to work in our own small corners to achieve the peace that we look forward to.